share the important information with the community involving our officer involved shooting. First, I would like to give an update of officer on Officer Brandon Haley's condition. As you know, Officer Haley was shot in the line of duty nearly two weeks ago. He, was, he has only been with an LMPD officer for roughly a year and a half. Officer Haley is still recovering at the University Hospital. I am grateful to be able to share with you that Officer Haley's condition is improving and he is no longer in critical condition. We're incredibly grateful that he was not killed that night. Officer Haley is fighting to get stronger each day so he can rejoin his fellow officers as we work towards the goal of keeping Louisville's communities as safe as possible. Officer Colin Bellato, who pulled Officer Haley to safety, remains on administrative leave. We are also proud of him for assisting Officer Haley that night. We are also profoundly appreciative of the community support for Officer Haley, Officer Bellato, and LMPD as a whole. Again, I thank you. To be clear, the individuals involved in this incident not only critically injured Officer Haley, but they also endangered Officer Bellato's life and they place everyone in that neighborhood in danger by repeatedly shooting in a densely populated area. As a reminder, LMPD recently transitioned to a new protocol as it relates to officer-involved shootings. The changes were implemented to help provide greater transparency to the public, giving the community clearer guidelines on what they can expect after an officer involved shooting and provide a process that is consistent. LMPD's Public Integrity Unit will take the lead in officer involved shooting investigations. As part of our new protocol, we will release body worn camera footage in a timely fashion. The public can expect the release of the video within 10 business days after the shooting. I repeat, 10 business days after the shooting. A copy of the case file will be turned over to the Commonwealth's Attorney Office for determination of final disposition. A copy will be provided to the Kentucky State Police for a thorough peer review. A copy will also be provided to Kentucky State, I'm sorry, to our Louisville Office of Inspector General in compliance with our existing Memorandum of Understanding. 30 days after the public release the body-worn camera footage, an update will be provided to the media regarding the status of the case. And we will continue to provide 30-day status updates thereafter. Each case is different. Therefore, timelines in the investigation process will vary. Lastly, I will personally supervise these investigations. Now I will turn it over to Deputy Chief Paul Humphrey. He will walk us through the body-worn camera footage from the shooting. On September 7th at approximately 2.30 a.m. at the intersection of 38th and Kentucky, a vehicle was observed traveling southbound on 38th Street and turned westbound on Kentucky. It was a white vehicle. It was approximately two blocks ahead of Officer Haley. The vehicle then turned with no lights on from Kentucky to southbound on 40th Street. As Officer Haley approached the intersection, when he observed the vehicle, the vehicle had already come to a stop on the west side of the street on the sidewalk. Officer Haley called off that two subjects were running from the vehicle and exited his marked police car in uniform. At that time, when he crossed the street, gunfire started being shot at him from across the street in a house just beyond the car. He is almost immediately struck by gunfire and falls down. At this point in the video is when his audio will begin uh, in the video. When he is struck by gunfire, he falls and returns fire. He tries to get up while still being shot at, and then he fa falls again. He then gets up, 
crosses the street and falls in a yard across the street under a little bit of cover. As Officer Bellotto, who was several blocks behind him, approached him in the grass and tried to assess his wounds and ask him about his injuries, the subjects in the house began shooting at them again. Officer Bellotto began to drag Officer Haley to cover while attempting to uh, assess his wounds and communicate to responding officers. As he did this, the subjects continued to, to shoot at them. Officer Bellotto returned fire. Officer Bellotto's shots will be the last two shots that you hear. He then drags Officer Haley again, all the way almost an entire block to safety. Uh, part of that he's doing on his knees, dragging Officer, Officer Haley, and then he gets up and is able to pull him the rest of the way. When they reach the alley, just east of the location, he is able to begin communicating effectively with responding officers and assessing the wounds. You will see him uh, pull out a medical kit and he will begin to treat Officer Haley right there at the scene. Officer Haley is shot in the chest and Officer Bellotto pulls out what is called a chest seal. Uh, one of the risks of being shot in the chest beyond just bleeding or damage to organs is a condition called tension pneumothorax, which means that air goes in the holes on the outside of your chest and begins to fill your chest cavity, putting pressure on your lungs and heart and can cause death that way also. So Officer Bellotto places two chest seals on Officer Haley right there at the scene. Uh, this is a piece of equipment that we issue and train officers on as well as tourniquets and other medical equipment that you've seen officers use in the field before. As other officers arrive, they begin to assess the scene and it is determined that um, they are going to put Officer Haley in the back of a police car for transport. They put him in the back of the police car and transport him to the University Hospital. As more officers arrive, um, SWAT and h and our hostage negotiators, arrive as well and it's a very chaotic scene because the two officers that are primarily involved in this being Officer Haley and Officer Bellotto are not able to communicate because they're going to the hospital. It is very chaotic and confusing as to uh, exactly what's going on besides for a, a basic suspect description and where those suspects are as they were also a block away when he's giving out this description of where the shots were coming from. After a long standoff, several hours later, five suspects are taken into custody and numerous guns are recovered uh, from that scene. This is an ongoing investigation and many of the facts of this case are still to be determined. As such, we will not be able to answer too many specific questions about the investigation. When it comes time to answering questions, we can answer general questions um, or clarifying questions about what you see on the video. So what you'll see on the video shortly after this, as you can see right now, uh, we have up a QR code on the screen that links directly to this case uh, for PIU. If you have any videos or any information uh, related to this case, you can click on the QR code or you can contact 574-LMPD. As far as the actual video, what you're about to see will be three videos simultaneously. You will have Officer Haley's body camera video, you will have Officer Bellotto's body cam video, and you will have Officer Haley's in-car video. These will play simultaneously, and as each of those no longer become relevant because of the scene, um, they will drop off. You will eventually have just the two body cameras uh, because they're no longer in front of the car, and then you will have just uh, Officer Bellotto's body camera because Officer Haley's is landing on the ground. It's, you can't see anything. Part of this video has been redacted, partially for sensitivity reasons, but, but primarily to protect the integrity of the ongoing investigation. There is some graphic uh, uh, scenes in here, but have mostly been blurred out, uh, as well as some information that has been blurred out to protect the integrity of the ongoing investigation.
this house, I believe the shots came from the house up there. Stay with me. Hey, watch, watch your back. Cover that. One of those houses over there, the shots came from the front door. I got it. next part, I want to explain a couple of things. One, uh, understand the, the way that's set up. It's very confusing. Think about how confusing that was to those officers out there being shot at at that time. Um, Officer Bellotto uh, dragged him for almost a block uh, while being shot at on his knees. Um, his poise uh, in that situation absolutely uh, was critical uh, to getting responding officers there. What you're going to see next will be a slow motion view showing you right now what you see is uh, highlight at where the car is, that it has no headlights on. You'll see its, uh, its tail lights come on when they activate their brakes prior to uh, turning on to 40th Street. Uh, the next view that you'll see after that will be a slow motion view from uh, the dash cam of Officer Haley 
that shows him being shot at while he's laying on the ground. Uh, you will see several um, bullets kicking up around him. Those will be the sparks that you see on the ground and how uh, truly fortunate we are that this wasn't even uh, more tragic than it already was. And then you will see um, a clip from the raw that is attached to the end just of uh, Officer Haley's uh, body camera. All of that will be attached to the video that is uh, placed on the internet. So, like I said, we're very fortunate that this wasn't much worse than what it was. Uh, we were very proud of these officers for Officer Bellotto to do what he did going in, into gunfire after an officer's already been shot. Uh, the strength to uh, drag an officer, 200 pound man with gear on, uh, for half a block on his knees while being shot at, to be able to have the poise to communicate and explain to officers what, they're, what they were responding to. Uh, you can see the chaos at that scene and, and, um, and how proud we are of, of their actions that night. Um, in their efforts to keep Louisville safe. Um, prior to turning over to the mayor, uh, I will explain again that this is an ongoing investigation and we can only answer clarifying our, our general questions, nothing specific to the facts of the investigation that we know at the time. Thank you, Chief and Deputy Chief. I think everyone who watches this video will agree with me that this is incredibly difficult to watch. However, we also see the bravery that in this case, Officer Haley and Officer Bellotto exhibited in this early morning interaction. I thank them. We're continuing to pray for Officer Haley's continued recovery and thank them for their bravery and heroism. This is the bravery that every man and woman who is part of LMPD exhibits every day and I want to thank them for their service as well. We have a lot of work ahead of us to do as a police department, as a city government, as a city, but we are working hard every day to make our city a safer city and to do that we need the public's help as well. We are taking a lot of steps, LMPD under the leadership of Chief Gwynne Biller-Roel, our city government are taking a lot of steps already to regain any trust that was lost by our community. 
to strengthen the bonds between LMPD and the entire community that we serve. Releasing officer-involved shooting video footage within 10 days is part of that effort to increase the amount of transparency we have with our police department and city government overall and to continue to rebuild that trust with the entire community. I ask for the public's help on this case and others. As you saw earlier, there was a QR code that could be scanned to provide any information about this particular incident. Whether it's for this or others, we are asking for the public's help. We have an anonymous phone number, 574-LMPD. You can also call Crime Stoppers, 582-CLUE, C-L-U-E. Either one of those approaches, or by scanning the QR code, can provide anonymous information that can ensure we bring justice for the families and victims of every victim of gun violence and violent crime in our community. Again, thanks to everyone at LMPD, and we continue to pray for Officer Haley's full and complete recovery. Deputy Chief. Any questions? Yes, sir. So the question was, of the five suspects taken into custody, have there been any arrests in this case? They are all persons of interest, but everything specific to their, their charges and is part of the ongoing investigation. So the DNA what? Everything specific to that is, is part of the investigation. Have people who are charged They have not been charged with this shooting. Do we need medical help that No, not off the top of my head. Was there anything suspicious in the area? So because of the condition of Officer Haley, we were, have not been able to talk with Officer Haley, and those specifics would be part of that investigation that we, we can't uh, disclose right now. But I think it's important to note that, um, you know, this is 2.30 in the morning, and Officer Haley is out here doing police work. That's absolutely what we need, and that's what we expect of, of our officers to protect this community, whether it's 2.30 2 in the morning or 2.30 in the afternoon. We want officers who are going out here and trying to take bad people and illegal guns off the street. We have to have that in order to keep this community safe. It's our duty and it's the oath that we take. So it's very, very important and it's not just the bravery of Officer Haley and Officer Bellotto that you saw, but it's every officer that does this all day long is, is what the public needs to understand. That's very, very important. None of these officers that go out here and do this on a daily basis know what they're walking into, yet they continue to do it because they understand the importance of keeping the community safe through effective policing. Does that I answer your question? Okay. Mayor, hi, Mayor. Um, Mayor, we just heard you ask the public for help, um, but in our investigation shortly after um, this incident, we discovered that one of the suspects that was arrested had been on HIV, arrested more than 20 times, and had just previously been arrested in June for fleeing and evading police and other felonies. Do you have any concerns about the judicial system's role in keeping the public safe? Improving public safety in Louisville is certainly a team effort. And the judicial branch and judges play a key role in that effort. And that's why the chief and I have had many conversations with judges and will continue to have conversations with the judicial branch about how we can partner together. We, without a doubt, need their assistance to ensure that those who are using illegal guns and causing harm to others need to have, there need to be consequences. And that's the role of the judicial branch. And so we are having conversations with them. We, are we want to make sure they are aware of, not with respect to any one particular case, but in general, what is going on in our city uh, what is driving a lot of the violent crime in our city. We will continue to have those conversations with them. And yes, the judicial branch plays a very important role in ensuring that our city continues to reduce the amount of gun violence that we're seeing today. Colonel Marshall, you might not know offhand the name of the two suspects. Do you know by chance who they are? I can't speak on that right now. Uh, the question was, do I think the car led officers to this block? I can't, I have no clue, no way of predicting that right now. Corporal Morgan. I don't know if this is a 
Uh, we do not. That's part of the investigation. And like I said, be due to um, due to the fact that Officer Haley is in the condition that he's in and unable to speak, we're not able to to get that information as far as why he was may have been looking at that car um, uh, prior to this incident. Can you talk about the weapons that you took out of the house? And, and just as a point of clarification, he did not actually stop the car. The car stopped on its own. He never activated his police lights. He was in a marked police car. He did park under a, a um, street light. He was visible as, as a police officer in uniform um, at that point uh, when he got out of his car, but he did not actually make an attempt to stop the vehicle. Uh, Last question. About so. how long do ballistic testing take? Because obviously there was gunfire and that is probably part of the investigation. So that can be anywhere from days to weeks. Uh, it just depends on the specifics of the case and what's going on at the at the lab at the time. I think we have one right there. Yeah, just uh, can you talk about the weapons that you took out of the house? Uh, the weapons that we took out of the house, I'm not able to, to discuss those. They're specific to the investigation. Yes, Thank, you all. Thank you. Thank you all very much.